Yo, 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 yo. I've been getting a bunch of messages recently about the fundamentals. We've been talking about fundamentals in Rocket League for a long, long time. And now I hear everyone talking about fundamentals and then I see what they're talking about. And uh, I don't know if they actually know what the fundamentals are. So we're going to talk about the actual fundamentals and hopefully this will help. So it's going to be a two part series. First part is going to cover positional fundamentals. Some of these can apply to all game modes, but this is going to be more focused on twos. And again, there are a few more rules, but we're just going to hit the main ones right now. And then in the second episode, we're going to focus on the mechanical fundamentals, which may be underwhelming. i got to be honest, for a lot of people. <laughs> okay, so number one, don't dive into corners. I made a video on this six years ago, and it still happened. I still can't believe it. I just have nightmares about it, you know. Even last night, I woke up for a nightmare, and I was in the corner of my room. And I said, like, what the hell? I don't want to be here. I don't like it. It's rubbish, and I want to be here. So stop diving into corners. Doing so gives you low percentage opportunities. You isolate yourself from the play. You leave your teammate in a 2v1. And that's really all the reasons I need to give you. But if you're really desperate, you need to press. You could do it with a few seconds left. If you spot a gap and you know 100% you will win, then I can understand you doing it. But as a general rule, don't do it, okay? Because what's happening is the idea of misplays is that you're meant to get information out of it. You're meant to get data, but people aren't. I'm not going to go into detail, but with that, just don't do it. Number two, hey, don't dive in as last man. Another one of my bad dreams. Okay, let's talk about this. You are can absolutely dive in as last man. If you're close, you have loads of boost, your teammate has an overcommit, you know exactly what's going on, you know, the opponents are boost off, whatever. However, if you're too far out of the play, then don't go for a miracle dive. If they create an angle, don't go for a miracle dive. If you, for whatever reason, feel you have to do this, please just turn your car sidewards and side flip to give yourself the best opportunity. But generally, I mean, nine times out of 10, you'll want to stall out as long as possible for your teammate to come back. If you just do those first two, that's going to get you quite far. But let's go to number three. Don't carry the ball on your car out of defense. This is tricky. Sometimes it can happen at an accident, but drop it straight away with a brake tap because with the dive meta, you will get dunked. And if you break, you'll be winning a low 50 and usually an open net. So don't carry it out of defense. Too dangerous. Jab the ball so much more. There's a reason that rhymes. In the USA live stream, I got halfway through champ two, I think it was just with jabs. I cannot tell you how overpowered they are compared to shots in most cases. And it's no wonder that in the past year or so, we're seeing more and more top level 1v1 players use them more than ever. They are low committal. They keep possession. They go high, which means the opponent has to do something about the ball situation. And you can start orchestrating the play of the game. And there's some great drills for this. Check out the grounded video. Don't go ahead of the play. This is a tricky one, as there's potentially so many opportunities off of lateral passing plays, off the back of a force overcommit, but people don't take them, and that's completely fair. But instead, just try to be behind the play. Be behind your teammate if they're closer to the ball. Doesn't mean direct. Obviously, good fundamental positioning is more central as last man. By behind, I just mean don't go in front of the ball, because if anything goes wrong, you have an opportunity to prevent the enemy pushing. Don't follow directly behind the teammate, especially if you're on the wing. In fact, the only time I would recommend following behind a teammate is if they're doing a good job of taking control of the center and they're staying goal side and you're just waiting to pick up any free balls. You, you can't almost help yourself because you sort of have to move down the center. Um, just do it slowly so that you can always move forward into a play. By being behind on the wings, you have to guarantee that the 50 is going to stay in that area and there's loads of space left for the opponent to try and take advantage of. It's just not worth it. Seven, try and stay more central as last man. Stay central means that you can move into whatever the outcome is in a similar fashion instead of putting all your eggs in one basket. Eight, protect the middle. The middle is the most dangerous place for the ball to be for you. If the enemy can expose that area, it is going to be a bad time. This is the control point and we absolutely do not want to give it up. That's why in basketball, funnily enough, you always funnel players to the wing because the center is dangerous and it's a big no-no. Number nine, don't back off too soon. Remember, twos is a game of teamwork. We can't be far away. An early rotation can set up disaster as the gap left could be too high. Instead, stick around. Even if you're the shadow player, you want to get right in there in shadow. It's easier to add momentum with them as opposed to start off far away and then try to close that gap. Number 10, always challenge a backboard hit. 
There are some situations where you won't need to if they're clearly missing and their teammates a mile away. Fair enough. But generally, if you can't see them or it's too fast, get up there, challenge it. Don't let them get a double touch. Don't let them get a redirect or any of that stuff. Always challenge it either before, during, or directly after. And number 11, a little bonus, try and have fun. It's a game. It's a great, challenging, competitive game, but try and have fun with it. And if you can succeed in doing that, please tell me how you did it. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Peace, peace, peace.